Hey, good day, folks. Welcome to another episode of Andrew's Life. I hope everybody's having a wonderful day. Now, the community, which I'm getting ready to drive through, is going to be located in Indianapolis. This community was the community I was talking about briefly on the video I made the other day at Speedway. Now, as you guys can see, we're, we're driving by the Speedway racetrack, and we're going to get ready to enter back into Indianapolis. Now this area I'm getting ready to drive through, you'll have a lot of people that will refer to this area as Speedway, but technically it is not Speedway, it is still Indianapolis, it's, it's West Indianapolis to be more specific. Now this community, you know, it personally, that as you guys will see, this community is a lot different than, than, than Speedway. And so that, so once we get to the, a little closer into the community, then I'll start talking a little more. In a minute or so, we'll be back into any, we'll be back into Indianapolis. Okay. Now this community is not my cup of tea. I'm gonna tell you guys straight up. If I were to live somewhere in Indianapolis, this community would not be it by any means. Like this community as now now in my humble opinion, this particular community brings hood vibes. It brings hood vibes because a as you guys can see, you got vehicles parked all over the place. Some of these houses got all kind of debris in the yard. Some of these houses are very poorly kept. And the fact that these houses are so close to each other. I mean, this is so many things about this community that I dislike. That I personally would never want to live here. So, real quick, that's just my two cents about the community as far as how I feel about the community. And back in, you know, and they're, you know, I don't know how it is these days, but I remember back in the day, uh, this area used to be fairly high crime. So maybe someone who's familiar with this area can drop a comment below and let me know how the crime in this area is. Now, this is... Now, now this area I'm driving through right now, again, it's right by Speedway, Indiana, but it's not Speedway, it's, it's Indianapolis. I wish I would have remembered or been and asked somebody about the zip code in the area, but I didn't, so that's my fault, so my apologies. So, while I'm driving through this community, uh, you know, give you guys something to look at. I want to touch on something. I kind of want to piggyback off of what I've been talking about the last couple of days in concerns to, well, not the last couple of days, but uh, like the other day, I like the video I put out a couple of, well, it's been a couple of days ago, that video I put out, when I was driving through Indianapolis, I was talking about gentrification. Now, and honestly, on that video, it I didn't even set that video out to be about gentrification. It just kind of, you know, it just kind of happened to be about gentrification because, I don't know, I just got a little excited and started talking more in depth about it. But on this video, I'm gonna talk about what I was gonna talk about on that video. Now in this video, we're gonna talk about the, I don't know about, uh, eh, let's see. Now I'm pretty sure many of you have been watching, just like me, many of you do watch social media. You know, YouTube, uh, Instagram, TikTok and all that. Now I would say for the last 
Eh, let's see. Let me think here. I would say for the last maybe 10 to 12 years, there's been a whole lot of channels on YouTube especially that have been nomad channels. And also there's been a lot of channels that have been uh, live off the grid channels. Now me personally, I enjoy watching the van life channels. I also enjoy watching off grid channels. I think there's a lot to be learned from those channels. I find that type of content to be exciting and entertaining and sometimes even educational. And for those of you that desire to live the van life or you desire to live the off grid life, go out here and buy a piece of land and and be in the middle of nowhere and you know do your thing okay if that's what if that's what you all want to do that's cool i mean there was a time when i thought about living as a nomad for a time and then when i did the math the math wasn't mathing for one and for two i just didn't feel like having to give up sticks and bricks and then have my entire home confined to a vehicle. That just didn't sit right with me. And then when I looked into the tiny home slash off-grid movement, which took off, as I can recall, that took off in, I want to say, in the early 2010s. I looked into that. But then when I began to do more investigating, when I began to like crunch the numbers as well, again, the off-grid movement to me didn't make any sense. Because like for me, uh, I did not have my own business. I was working a nine to five, just like I'm working nine to five right now. I do not have an online business to where I can make enough money to where I can not have to worry about working a storefront job. I can do everything online. Unfortunately, I have not created that kind of a business. And back then, I definitely didn't have it. I mean, in fact, back then, I didn't even have this channel. So, and also, when I looked at some of the minimal requirements that many states had for people that wanted to live off grid, such as you, you had to at least have a well and a septic system. And then I looked into the cost of running electric or having a solar set up to where I would be able to power larger appliances like refrigerators, ovens, microwaves, things like that. You know, some type of a hot water heater, climate control. And when I began to look at the cost to have all that to, 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 to when, I, when I began to look at the cost of what it would cost somebody like myself to live off grid or to live the way some of these people on these off grid channels are living. Again, the math wasn't mathing because I got to thinking, okay, well, it's going to be a hell of a lot easier and even a lot cheaper for me to just buy a small house, ideally on a quarter of an acre or larger in a small town or even in a small city and call it the day as opposed to buying some land in the middle of nowhere, no man's land and then having to install septic well and then on top of that I'm having to either 
uh, get electricity to the property or I'm having to have some type of a solar setup which for the type of solar setup that I would need it would be a rather costly endeavor now I find now me personally I find it a bit uh, ironic how anymore when you go on social media you have a lot of your larger uh, YouTube channels that are that are glorifying van life they're glorifying living off grid and like I said I find those type of lifestyles to be you know I mean personally when it comes to the van life like I told you guys before I'm cool with doing van life part time maybe a month or two months max at a time I'm cool with van life but then after that I need to get home to my sticks and bricks and have access to electricity, plumbing, and all that type of stuff. And as far as living off-grid, like I said it, at, at first, the off-grid slash tiny home idea sounded wonderful, it sounded great. I looked into doing it, but financially it didn't make any sense for me to do it. The cost would have been way too much. And for me to get everything put in place to live that life, it would have been way too time consuming, way too much headache. To me, it just wasn't worth it. And there's a lot of you people out here that are wanting to live the man life and wanting to live off grid. At least you think you do. And a lot of you need to go out here and do your research like I did my research. You need to see what it, like, like for an example, if you wanna live off grid, you need to see what that type of lifestyle is gonna entail. How much money, like number one, what type of a setup are you gonna need? Number two, what is all that gonna cost? Thirdly, here's a big one. Now for those of you that are like myself, you still work a nine to five storefront type of job, understand one thing when it comes to living off grid you're not gonna just be able to buy a plot of land somewhere within an hour of the metro you're gonna most likely have to move out an hour and a half minimum from the metro to buy your piece of land and then once you buy that piece of land at the minimum you're gonna to have to have a septic and a well. And once you have that, you're gonna to, you're gonna to have to figure, okay, are you gonna have electricity? And how much is it gonna to cost to bring electricity to your property? Or are you gonna have a solar setup? And how much is the, the type of solar setup that you need? How much is it gonna cost? I mean, I find it ironic how you got all those type of channels that are doing very well on YouTube and I'm happy for those people don't get me wrong but I find it kind of ironic how you how that how the off-grid lifestyle and the nomad slash van life lifestyle is being heavily glorified on social media while at the same time gentrification is continuously going on in many of your major cities and you have a lot of working class people that are being priced out of the city. And this is going on throughout the United States. It's almost like they're trying to get people who are not super wealthy to leave the city. And to either A, move somewhere in no man's land to where you're gonna have to drive a lot farther to get to your job you're going to have to spend a lot more money on transportation. And with that being said, is you're going to have to save up a lot more. You're going to have to spend a lot more money for new vehicles. And at the end of the day, who does that benefit? 
it's going to benefit the people who are of the top 1% or maybe the top 5%. Those are the people who are going to benefit the most from people like me and you moving way out in the middle of nowhere in no man's land having to drive an hour plus each way to work. And there's, and in some of your states like Illinois, there's gonna be all, there's all kind of toll roads that go around some of the counties of your metro. So just to drive around that county, you gotta pay a toll. Just to get into some of the counties, you gotta pay a toll. Now, I'm not trying to get too political, but many of us are well aware of the push for more Americans to drive electric vehicles. Now, I think electric vehicles, you know, I'm not a fan of them. I'm going to tell you straight up. I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of electric vehicles because, A, not only do they cost more than regular gas vehicles, but for most people, if you were, for most people, if, if you were to, to purchase an electric vehicle, it would also come with a nice hefty car payment. Not to mention the cost to maintain a lot of your electric vehicles. Oh, you need a new battery? It's not going to be like a battery that you put in a gas car to where you can buy a new battery for, battery for maybe a couple hundred dollars. You need a new battery for an electric car, you're looking at thousands of dollars. You're looking at like thousands. Like, uh, and also, another reason why I'm not a fan of electric cars is just the fact that many of them have a track record of not being reliable such as your Teslas. And if you had to go on a long road trip somewhere, like if you had to drive, let's say, across the country for whatever reason, every so many miles, you have to find a place to plug up and charge. And then you have to be there for, I don't know, maybe an hour or two to charge up your car. As where if you had a regular gas car, you can just go to a gas station, fill up, and keep it moving. You don't have to worry about running out of electricity. Not to mention that your gas vehicles are much more reliable than your electric vehicles. And they're a lot cheaper to purchase as well. And they're going to most likely be a lot cheaper to insure. Because they're cheaper to maintain and repair compared to electric vehicles. So, I'm thinking that one of the many reasons why more and more of your major cities are gentrifying, I mean, I think to some small degree, it's, a, it, it, it's political. It's an effort to get more people to buy electric vehicles. Because some people are thinking, okay, well, if I go buy an electric vehicle, I'm not going to have to spend all this extra money on gas because the vehicle is electric, not taking into consideration all the other expenses of an electric vehicle, such as higher maintenance, the cost of the vehicle itself. As for with a gas vehicle, you know, you can go and buy you an older gas vehicle, cash money for less than $5,000 in some cases. As for with an electric vehicle, you're not gonna find nothing that cheap at this point. So most likely, you buy an electric vehicle, you're going to have to make payments. And like I told you the other day, wealthy people desire to be as close to their money as possible. So it is financially beneficial 
for wealthy people to live back in the city. And I, and I think that's one, and I, and I think these are some of the reasons why many of your social media, I mean, I think this is one of the reasons why that on social media, the whole uh, live off the grid, you know, leave the big bad city that's crime infested, live off the grid. You know, you can go buy, go buy you a piece of land in the middle of nowhere in no man's land. You know, build you a little structure and you're good. And I think that's the reason why that idea is being pushed so hard. Because I do believe that your leadership is attempting to get as many working class people as possible out of the city and into living in communities of located further away. If you live in communities located further away, okay, yeah, housing prices are gonna be cheaper. Uh, property taxes typically will be significantly lower and you will get more bang for the buck, which is all good. And at least as it stands right now, the crime is gonna also be a little less. But as I told you the other day, in certain communities, unfortunately, that can and most likely will change. As more and more people get priced out of the city and are forced to have to move out further. So while living further from the city will be cheaper when it comes to, to housing, one thing which we all need to take into consideration is we're going to be paying, you know, we're going to be paying way more money for transportation, as I mentioned earlier. And in a way, I also think this gentrification uh, that's going on and this whole push to get a bunch of working class people priced out of the, of the city is a way for your employer to be able to make you more dependent on your job. Because nowadays, uh, what you got going on is uh, give me a second here. All right, folks, this video is getting ready to end, but I still want to continue to say what I got to say. So just to let you guys know, the actual view of the of West Indianapolis is going to end, but I'm going to keep on talking. So if you really want to hear what I got to say on this particular matter, just keep watching. It's going to be black. You're not going to see anything, but you, you will still hear my voice. All right, folks. So like I was saying, I think what's going on right now in terms of the whole movement, the whole push, in my opinion, to get the working class out of the city is to make people more dependent on their jobs. Because many of these companies are very well aware that you got more and more people that are, you know, working a little less quitting their jobs, retire, you know, they're, 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 you know, they're joining the fire movement and then they're retiring before they turn 40. And, and think about this for a minute. If you, even though you might live in a smaller community where housing prices are lower, I mean, just think about this for a minute. If you're having to spend more money on transportation, gas, new vehicles. You know, maybe I mean your 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 auto insurance might even go up because now you're having to drive further each day to and from your employ employment. You know, the cost of vehicle maintenance and repairs and all that. So if you're 
So rather than paying a little bit of extra money on property taxes, now you're taking that money and you're spending it on transportation. Not to mention that it's going to have an effect on your overall health in the long term because you're not going to be able to get as much sleep. You're not going to have quite as much time in the day to take care of yourself properly. properly. So for some of you, it's going to mean more visits to the hospital. It's going to mean more illnesses, which all of which uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, it's going to mean more. It, it, basically, it's going to mean more money that you're going to have to spend on other things. If I'm making any sense. All right, folks, I don't know what else to tell you guys. That's all I got to say on this matter. I'm starting to, you know. I'm running out of things to say that's intelligent, so I'm going to quit talking. Hopefully, you guys got something out of the video. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.